In this video, I'm going to begin by talking about the Romantic composer Frederick Chopin. Chopin was born in 1810 and died in 1849. Uh, born in uh, Poland and grew up in Warsaw. Um, showed enormous talent uh, for the piano. He had a Polish mother and a French father. And he moved to Paris at the age of 21, which was, I guess, uh, had shifted to becoming the artistic capital uh, during the Romantic era. Uh, he composed almost exclusively for the piano. He wrote very few works for the orchestra, only like a, um, a couple piano concerti, um, of course, the piano being the solo instrument there, but uh, almost all his music is written for the piano, which is why he was so associated with the Romantic period since the piano was the, uh, I guess, the favored instrument during this time. Um, in Paris, he made a living playing piano in private salons, teaching piano to young, wealthy, talented women, and published his compositions for the piano and got paid pretty well for it there. As far as his character is concer was concerned, he had a very shy demeanor, wasn't very outgoing, um, and he did like to play uh, chamber concerts um, in intimate settings, but um, try to avoid the large concert halls, much like, uh, well, uh, Franz Liszt, who relished in the large um, uh, audiences and large concert halls. Uh, Chopin was kind of the exact opposite, where he preferred to play for more uh, intimate and smaller settings. As far as his music is concerned, as I said, it was uh, almost all written for uh, the piano. Um, his mazurkas and polonaises have a distinct Polish style um, in that uh, they use various Polish rhythms and also there's this uh, Lydian mode that's kind of based off of the um, uh, major scale but with some altered tones that were uh, raised forth in, in to be uh, real specific that uh, it evokes um, Polish folk music and he liked to use music that was very um, uh, uh, Polish folk-like in it, uh, hence the mazurkas in it. He had a really um, uh, strong patriotism towards his home country of Poland. Um, he composed the Revolutionary Etude, which uh, kind of showed off his anger towards the Russian occupation of Poland, which was a reluctant part of the uh, Russian Empire during this time here. And he didn't really write program music in that it was uh, had a distinct image or story associated with, but there were there were images, and I think um, I think one way that one can characterize his music is that he had a lot of character pieces that they showed a lot of characters and definitely uh, uh, outpouring of emotions and feelings from the composer himself. Um, one of those genres is the nocturnes. He actually derived this from uh, a popular um, uh, form of music uh, made uh, by, famous by the uh, Irish composer John Field. Uh, what nocturnes are, uh, just like the word says, it's a piece that evokes uh, moods and feelings associated with the night. Now, there's no preconceived uh, formal plan of nocturne like the sonata form where there's an exposition and um, uh, development and recapitulation. It's more of an anything goes type of uh, formal structure that goes with nocturnes, which kind of fits with Chopin's style because his style, um, you could almost imagine him impro improvising at the piano uh, with some of these nocturnes. The piece that I want to play that's kind of indicative of Chopin's style is uh, his Nocturne in E-flat major. Despite it being in a major key, it does have a very mel melancholy feel to it. Um, as far as the texture is concerned, it is in a homophonic texture where there's one distinct melody that goes kind of like this. This melody is repeated at uh, various times throughout the nocturne, uh, kind of serves as the basis of the piece here. But each time that he brings back the melody, it isn't just a simple repetition. What he does is he kind of elaborates on it with uh, various ornamentations, adds more notes to it like this. So 
um, he really, you really do get a sense, uh, at least from a performer standpoint, I can tell you, share with you that uh, you get this feeling when performing his music that uh, you're playing through some of his spontaneous uh, improvisations uh, that he just simply wrote out there for you and uh, you kind of get to live uh, through his um, musical mind by playing through some of these pieces here. Uh, and also what helps unify the piece is the waltz-like left hand. That goes kind of like that as well. As far as the um, other techniques or things to listen out for are his, his use of rubato, not robato, but rubato. What rubato is, it's a romantic technique of taking slight fluctuations of uh, tempo for expressive purposes. So the performer has some license to speed up or slow down as the music dictates to him or her as the... Uh, emotions that you want to express through the music if you want to take certain time with others then you can slow down or if you want to um, kind of have your heart racing through one section you can speed up as well to a certain degree it's very subtle but uh, nonetheless it's a lot more interesting than hearing it played Everything really strict in time here. Um, there are pieces, of course, that uh, require you to do, you know, play with a steady rhythm here. But uh, um, I think what makes a lot of these pieces romantic in nature is that kind of freedom of uh, not being tied down to a specific tempo here. So uh, listen out for that in my mini performance here of the Nocturne in E flat by uh, Frederick Chopin. There's more to that nocturne here, but uh, just for time's sake, I'm going to stop there. But I do implore you, if you're interested in more of Chopin's music, to uh, look online for some of his um, uh, um, music. And it's really some, uh, uh, probably some of the best uh, works written for uh, music, especially the piano. <laughs>